opening up a massive pay-per-view card here in Las Vegas during International Fight Week. Who's luckier and more blessed than us? Nobody. This is like the greatest job you could have in the entire world. Wow, it looks like there's a lot of you who are already tuning in, so that's amazing. Thank you so much for being here. Um, if there's anything in particular that you want to hear from in terms of Kai and um, his upcoming rematch with Brandon Moreno. So we're going to be talking about his fight at UFC 277, um, but obviously we need to talk about UFC 276 as well with two of his teammates atop the marquee. He, he, he really wants to make this one look easy, so... I've never doubted Izzy, and I, I'm not going to start, so I feel like he's going to make a statement, and um, I can't wait to just sit back and enjoy the show. Kai, it is always such a pleasure to talk to you. I'm looking forward to seeing you there in Texas. Best of luck the rest of training camp, and safe travels. Uh, we will see you in the U.S. in just a couple of weeks. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We appreciate it. Thanks for joining Twitter Spaces. This was a fun experiment. I think it was a great one. See you guys. I think that was it. I mean, I don't know. Uh, Monday was cool. It's been uh, productive. Lots of phone calls, lots of meetings, lots of emails, but we're just rolling on through and fingers crossed we have a great international fight week. All right, uh, let's start with the schedule. Keisha has noticed there's a lot going on this weekend. Well, 9 a.m. is your camera meeting. 10 a.m. is the camera blocking for the Hall of Fame for 90 minutes. Saturday, T-Mobile. <clears throat> Early start for more rehearsal time. We'll get to that. 12.45 is a social media influencer that Gavin has brought along that will be playing the walker for Megan's reports. So. All right, everyone, it is Wednesday. The calm before the storm, we're in the UFC Apex. We just wrapped up our format meetings for the broadcast on Saturday, the weigh-in on Friday, and of course the Hall of Fame on Thursday. Basically what that means, everyone involved with the production goes over the formats line by line to make sure we all know what is expected of us come Saturday. And it's always a really fun time, but a busy time, and we are now gonna just go home, write scripts, prepare for the chaos that begins on Thursday. So we'll see you there. Welcome to the beautiful Red Rock Resort here in Summerlin, Las Vegas. This is the host hotel uh, for the UFC card this weekend, and we are doing our fighter meetings, which is essentially the broadcast team and producers meet with the majority of the fighters on the card to kind of get their insights. A lot of things we aren't able to say until they actually start walking to the octagon, so it's kind of top secret, but we have ours with Max Holloway up next, so come on. How you doing? Good, good, good. If you look at the first fight to the second fight, you know, two different guys, you know, that the, we, we were two different guys in the first fight. We're going to be two different guys in the second fight, so. We just wrapped up with Max Holloway, so we're done with our format meetings. I'm going to run down the street and go to my house, and then we're making our way to T-Mobile Arena. That's where the press conference is this afternoon, and then we'll all get ready after that for the Hall of Fame ceremony where our dear friend Daniel Cormier is being inducted. So we've got a busy evening ahead of us, but uh, yeah, should be a fun night of work. Thank you guys. Thank you. Magna Levy backstage inside the T-Mobile Arena with the soon-to-be Hall of Famer Habib Nurmagomedov. Habib, you have had so many accomplishments and accolades in your career. What does this one mean, being inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame? All right, so we just wrapped up our Hall of Fame interviews. They were quick, they were easy, they were really meaningful to me. I've worked with Habib and Daniel for what feels like over a decade, um, and obviously they're so deserving of this opportunity. So to be able to chat with them before they actually get inducted was really cool. Uh, we have our ceremony uh, starting at seven. I'm gonna walk the red carpet, which is not like a thing I really am good at or wanna do. I forgot all of my jewelry, so that should tell you how prepared I am for this. Just walked the red carpet, did some media. Um, I was very nervous, but I think I faked it good enough. So I'll go home now, work on a lot of scripts. Friday, we have got a full plate. We've got official weigh-ins, and then we've got ceremonial weigh-ins and lots of interviews there. An ESPN pre-show that I have to host signing at UFC X. So lots to do, but what else would we want to be doing? We'll see you on Friday. Jessica. Jessica, you are so cute. Where are you guys from? Idaho. Twin Falls, Idaho. Twin Falls, Idaho. Eight hours. Eight hours. Oh, I love the dedication. I signed autographs today. Um, it's actually sort of a, a thing that I do every year, but everybody was so kind. It's almost overwhelming. It's, it's hard to hear how 
kind they are sometimes and I got gifts brought to me. I mean, it's, it's really wild. People would travel from all across the globe and, and think to bring us stuff. So it's a really incredible way to sort of dive into the community and be a part of it and get to actually shake hands and see faces. So it's something I definitely don't take for granted. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. I'm from Las Cruces. You might know no someone from there. All right, welcome to the ESPN set. It's Friday, it's weigh-in day. We've got an ESPN Plus pre-show to do, so I'm about to jump into that hosting chair, and then after this, we'll run right down for weigh-ins to begin. So yeah, busy day, but very lucky to have it. The really fun thing about pay-per-views for me is sort of what different hats I get to wear throughout the weekend. So on Fridays, I host a one-hour pre-show for ESPN Plus, where uh, myself and two analysts will sort of break down the card and tell everyone what they need to know, major storylines, major predictions, every time before a numbered card. So yeah, definitely always a highlight for me on a Friday. Official weight 135 for the Sugar Show! International Fight Week always seems to be these majestic cards that we look back and they're historic to us and they have these incredible performances. And it felt like that's what everybody was gearing up for today. So obviously they're ready to go. They have the full confidence in themselves. But I got particularly more excited for these matchups just after speaking to them and really feeling their energy and hearing them talk because I truly, truly think Saturday night we are in for some epic bouts. All right, ceremonial weigh-ins have just wrapped up. They're literally tearing down things here in T-Mobile Arena in order to create space to make the octagon because Saturday night it all goes down literally right here on this floor. Um, it's been a day, but what a blessed one it is. Now we go home to write scripts. So now this jib's going to move. Keep an eye on it. So you don't Whoa. Oh, wow. What's up? Not much. Make a healthy decision. Welcome. So rehearsals are actually probably my favorite part of the day um, because it's really where we get to have some fun, but it also fine tunes what we're gonna do for the broadcast. So I come in with the scripts that I have written, and then when we rehearse, it's my time to really finesse what I'm going to say, feel comfortable within the wording to make sure that it best fits for the scenario of those walkouts or reports, whatever we're doing. Over your right shoulder, Megan, so switch This one. is where Sean O'Malley thrives, opening a massive UFC pay-per-view card in Las Vegas under the bright hot lights of this fight mecca. For Sugar, the bigger the opportunity, the more he looks forward to showing off the skills that make him unique and dangerous. Today in T-Mobile, it's been fun. We actually had a social media influencer doing the walkout. She was pulling off some dances and acrobatics in there. So it's just an added layer of levity before we get into the really serious stuff of the live broadcast. Live from T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. This is UFC 276, Adesanya versus Cannoneer. All right, so when we're getting the count in our ears and we know that it's almost time to do a live hit, honestly, what's going through my mind is what I'm gonna say, and then it's like, don't mess up. That's really like the main thing that goes through my mind is like, hey, you worked like too hard on this to mess up, so you better not. Now for Muniz, his grappling abilities are, of course, his bread and butter with 15 of his career 22 wins coming by way of submission. But he told me yesterday he wants to show something different tonight. After a five-month-long training camp, he hopes to put the division on notice and prove to them that his hands are just as dangerous as his abilities on the campus. We are backstage in what we call the mix zone. Uh, Cowboy versus Jim Miller is just about to go down. After this one, I have a live hit about Jared Cannonier and then a headset on Brad Riddell. Then we go into the pay-per-view. So it's a lot of like memorizing, watching fights, being ready for producer's notes. It's a busy time and there's a lot of balls in the air, a lot of juggling to do, but we got this. <laughs> when I'm watching fights and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to ask at the end of those fights when I do the interview. It's kind of a combination of things. Of course, you have to ask those technical questions about the actual fight itself. But then for me, there's also a lot of like body language. What are the coaches saying? Um, what are they saying to their opponents in there? So my mom texted me, I'm crying. <laughs> well, I won't look like this anymore. This body is going, you're going to see. I'm going to look like the Thor, the big fat Thor. That's, that's where I'm going. It's more on my end than just, you know, what their fighting style did in that particular matchup. It's also about those other things that maybe the broadcast can't talk about when they're actually breaking down the fight, but then I can ask about when they come to me. And still! Immediate reaction. Well, Israel Adesanya goes in there and he implements his game plan. You know, he's got great defense, he's his jab, he's got great uh, takedown defense. Co-main event was incredible. There were some great finishes. 
on the pay-per-view as well. So now we've got three more interviews to do before we wrap up the evening. So just waiting for fighters to get back to us. Yeah, broke, yeah, broke the hands. So. You did? Shit, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. All right, the champ just gave me some news. You broke your hand? Oh, well, we don't know, but uh, I know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I heard, I heard it, uh, I think, the second round. I knew it was broken, but it was right. It was a thumb, so I could still use the knuckles, so I was able to still use the hand. So it was all good. It went well. Um, I'm feeling so tired. Happy we got through the week. I just have one more thing to do, which is a little wrap-up with mm -hmm. ESPN and my good friend, Roberto Komodo. So, yeah, just really looking forward to eating. <laughs> I'm going to leave you Brett Okamoto backstage at T-Mobile Arena. All right, the main event has wrapped up, Brett. Um, what do you make of it? All right, we have wrapped up the evening, which means International Fight Week is officially over for us. It was a fun one. I always feel so blessed to be here. We had lots of things to prepare for. Not all of them came to fruition, but that's the nature of our job. So, yeah, there's... There's always something to look forward to with this sport, which is cool because in two weeks we're in Long Island. It's always about moving forward, trying to progress. It's not just the fighters who try to evolve, it's all of us. So yeah, looking forward to continuing the evolution. But right now, I'm gonna go eat tacos.